Okay, we are recording, so we're good. We are good. Good evening. Before we start, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Plattsburgh Town Board is using adaptive practices in the interest of public health. The Association of Towns has provided guidance along with our attorney, and we will be using Zoom as a remote meeting software to conduct our meetings. The Town of Plattsburgh continues to learn the technology and to allow folks ample time to log in to the software. Uh, we are starting at 5.30 with the Town Board meeting beginning at 6 p.m. At this point, I am going to call our meeting, uh, our work session to order at 6 p.m. Can I get a roll call, please? Michael S. Cashman. Present. Thomas E. Wood. I'm around. Maggie LaFave. Here. Barbara E. Hebert. Here. Charles A. Costick. Here. James J. Coffey. Here. And I'm in attendance. Uh, Town Clerk. Here, we need our homes. Yes. Well, it's kind of like when you were here before. You were here, but not really here. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything for public comment this evening? Great. Thanks for joining us again, though, Debbie. Uh, How's it going, by the way? Has anybody been joining anything? Uh, I guess I do have a public comment. Sure. <laughs> no, it's just that. I'm just wondering if, if how this, this is working. Um, I, I, I'm going to get to that. Let me go a couple okay. other things, and I'll, I'll jump in, because okay. I'd, I'd like your, your uh, perspective on some stuff. So um, I know that the governor is providing a daily update. Um, the reason that I'm providing some of these updates is these are some of the, the highlights that have been occurring in between some of our, our meetings. And these are some of the uh, activities that have ongoing impacts on not only the town of Plattsburgh, but the greater concepts of what we're trying to address under the pandemic. Um, I will remind folks that schools and non-essential businesses continue to stay closed through May 15th. We continue to be on a 50% workforce reduction. Uh, using the A team and uh, C team structure. Governor Cuomo issued the executive orders requiring all people in New York to wear masks or face coverings in public. Um, I would remind folks that it does not, a face covering does not need to be a surgical mask or an N95. Um, so just to cover that there. Governor Cuomo also announced the partnership with the federal government to double the testing capacity in New York State. The State Department of Health has also begun to conduct statewide antibody testing. In fact, some of you may have heard this. Um, earlier in the week, the New York State Health Department was here in the town at Price Chopper. What they were doing was trying to get a sample size so that they could look at the overall numbers of the state and they will continue to um, um, bring those, those services and testings and things more statewide. Um, no more additional information on it. Governor Cuomo and Mayor Bloomberg announced a nation-leading COVID-19 contact tracing program being done in coordination with Connecticut and New Jersey. The, the feeling there is as testing continues to ramp up, um, say that um, Tom had COVID-19 and he interacted with um, a number of people the goal is that the contact team would help inform those individuals that they came in contact with Tom to encourage them or to expedite in a way to get them testing as well. Um, so that's part of the goal uh, or objective. Uh, Governor Cuomo um, also worked uh, in concert with uh, President Trump and reported a good meeting. Hopefully more information will come from that as well. Elective outpatient treatment can resume in counties and hospitals without significant risk of COVID-19 surge starting uh, next week. To, to kind of further drill down on that, the North Country, because we continue to see, uh, though not large numbers, some positive cases and some deaths, that is likely going to dictate where we uh, fall on some of the openings uh, for various things like the, the elective surgeries. Uh, New Yorkers without health insurance can still apply through the New York Health through May 15th uh, and must apply within 60 days of losing coverage. Um, I personally uh, have been advocating, encouraging people to take advantage of this, and I know that you folks have the number, but for those that may be watching at home, 
there is a COVID-19 emotional support hotline. Even the strongest of us are being tested right now. And um, if you are interested in it, that phone number again is 1-844-863-9314. And that's for mental health counseling. Again, we've talked about how in the rural communities, mental health counselors are, are really uh, struggling to even provide service to some of the folks that they have because of the connectivity issues, etc. Uh, the Clinton County Health uh, Department continues to do a daily briefing, and in fact, tomorrow they'll be doing their long form version of it where uh, they do a Facebook Live taking some questions but also trying to integrate it into some of the comments. They do post that on YouTube afterwards, knowing that some people are not on Facebook or you know want to be on Facebook. Um, they continue to put out press releases as well. Um, we here at the town uh, have secured uh, part of our purchase for uh, face coverings for uh, our employees as well. Uh, we were in a, in a pretty strong position, but we continue to work in concert with the surrounding towns, uh, villages, and city. Um, to date, uh, there have been 57 lab confirmed uh, um, COVID-19 cases. Um, there was a new case this morning. It was the first one within approximately the last four days. So we are seeing a little bit of a, a shrink within some of the numbers, which is a positive thing. The numbers that, we, that the county reports as compared to the state reporting, uh, sometimes the number can be slightly different. The reason for that is um, two of the cases currently in the data that, uh, that they've collected were actually tested in Vermont, but they live in Clinton County. And they get the numbers a little bit delayed. So if people are looking at how come the county's reporting this number, the state of New York is reporting that number, I just wanted to provide that clarity for you folks um, that may be following along. 42. Have, uh, of the 57 have recovered and to date 548 um, have been officially tested with the test kits. Suspected cases uh, is 42, 38 recovered and currently there's approximately 16 active cases from the time that I was able to pull the numbers. <clears throat> so our county um, in, in many ways is, is doing well um, but um, Unfortunately, yesterday there was the fourth, the fourth death um, in the county. It was from one of the Plattsburgh Housing Authority towers. Um, as we were kind of talking before, that some of our senior homes and the high density areas um, have the, the likelihood of higher infiltration and, and um, uh, infection rates and such. So uh, we certainly are not out of the woods. Um, we continue to encourage uh, social distancing and best practices. You know, this is one of those times that it's not just care for ourselves; it's care for our community. And um, I would just again encourage everybody to carry the message to uh, do your part uh, because you could be asymptomatic and you know impact uh, somebody else. And, uh, and I've shared, you know, my own grandmother. Um, I think of who was in a facility and. Uh, you know, just, just others. We all know many people like that. So, uh, more information to come. Just a quick update uh, for the town and kind of looping back to, to Debbie's initial uh, question is, the town of Plattsburgh continues to do its best and I think we are in many ways leading the way for local government. And what I mean by that is, um, in any way that we can, we have been using adaptive practices to continue to hold our meetings, such as our, our, our council meetings. Uh, the planning board just had their meeting. Uh, it was a marathon meeting. Uh, and you know, I'd be interested, Debbie, to get your perspective on it, but um, I was really happy that you know, we recognized that in local government that if you put everything on pause, it's gonna do a couple of things. One is you're, you're just pushing things off that eventually are going to have to be addressed. So finding some adaptive practices allows for the business community, your, your homeowners, your property owners, you know, the things that are, that are needing to be reviewed to still move forward in a way uh, and not give special preference to any particular thing by saying, oh, well, we're, 
we're going to say you're not essential, we're, we're doing our best to kind of move this forward. Um, they're still learning it. It was the first planning board's Zoom. Um, and, you know, I think we've even learned a little bit more. Some of you are logging on a little bit later because you're comfortable with it now. You know that it's a couple of clicks and things like that. Debbie, do you have any thoughts and feelings from the, the planning board perspective? It was wrong. <laughs> I just remind folks the, the reason that we're using Zoom, and, and I know that it's not a, a perfect system, and Debbie, you had asked last week, you know, what, what would we do if someone kind of jumps in and, and things like that. Um, we're creating some of those layers to try to protect some of it. Um, but we have heard a couple of people have called and said, well, I don't, I don't have a laptop, or I don't have an iPad. The nice part about Zoom is if you have a phone, you can participate. So you don't need to have the web version, you know, like to, to interface with that. Um, and I would also remind people that if uh, a, a comment period comes forward, we still continue to accept comments from the public the old traditional way, slap a stamp on it, send us a letter in the, in the mail, email us, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's multiple ways, so again, and that way, I feel like the town is leading in the best interest of making sure that the public engagement piece continues to stay intact. Um, it, it may not be perfect, um, but we are trying our hardest. I know some towns um, are doing some other things that are not as, in, in my opinion, um, they're not making the best attempt. They're doing what is quickest and easiest for the board or boards, um, you know, like there's EBAs and planning boards. So we'll continue to move that forward. Um, again, uh, the, the highway department continues uh, to do um, great work. They're out there picking up the sand. It's taking a little bit longer, but they're, they're out doing those things. The water department continues to address the critical infrastructure of the town. Um, the ZBA has already been picking um, Trevor's brain about you know what's the best practice for implementing uh, you know Zoom for their their zoning board meeting coming up. That's why I say um, Brian um, Dowling uh, and I have been having a number of conversations of what it will look like uh, for the board of assessment review that will be coming up uh, soon. Uh, we are looking for some best practices in that regard, so we will again make sure to consult with the association of towns in case anything new has developed. Um, so a lot of it has been planning. Uh, I myself has, have been spending a uh, significant amount of time on Zoom uh, or WebEx uh, because everybody is, is really hosting meetings that way. Um, uh, continuing to do a department head huddle in the morning. And I'll go back to this and, and we will be having a more focused uh, conversation about this. I don't want to... Um, uh, coast over, it's not meant to that, but just to put it in perspective, we know that the city of Plattsburgh and the county are uh, looking at the fiscal impacts. We know that we continue to look at that. We're in a little bit different position because of um, our, our budgetary models. We are, a little, I would argue, we are lean and mean uh, for local government. Um, and as we get some of the additional numbers in from our county sales tax, and some of the advice from um, the county administrator, Michael Zerlo, I've talked with him a number of times, will be able to do some better projections and modeling for us. Um, some of the best advice that I got from uh, uh, 
like Zerlo was, we're living in unprecedented times. Uh, don't try to create too many models without too many good numbers because you could find yourself going in too many direction, too many different directions. Um, so I just want to put that out to you that we aren't ignoring the fact that there are going to be some challenges ahead of us financially. Um, I think we all, um, Debbie included and, and, and Jim, have all remarked that we're very fortunate to have Patrick Bowen as our finance manager. Um, our modified zero-based budgeting that we've been doing over the last couple of years has really moved past the times of want and focused on need and priority. Um, that's not to say that we don't have projects that are things that we feel are, um, you know, um, more holistic in nature, you know, for the town. You know, we support recreation and we support doing, you know, other projects, but we will be looking at uh, the numbers and also looking at how do we protect what I believe are um, the vital elements of the town and that's the employees. You know, uh, it doesn't make sense to have a fleet of um, vehicles uh, in, in the bay and not have the people to plow the roads, for example. So um, more to come on that, I do promise all of you. Um, I just want to get you some more numbers so that we can talk about action versus um, what ifs, I think we can get too marred down by the what if, what if, what if, and you know, what, what would that look like? Um, tonight, the reason that we're holding uh, a meeting was to give a general overview of that, um, but also we will not be having a meeting next week. It's the fifth Thursday, um, unless something develops, um, I, which I, I don't anticipate holding a meeting. I think we should keep to that same model, uh, but I would uh, seek uh, a motion to go into an executive session though for two items. Um, one is the ongoing pending litigation with the city of Plattsburgh and the other is uh, possible pending litigation with uh, certiorari for Champlain Center Mall. Um, is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Ebert, is there, a, uh, who's the second? Second. Okay. Wood? Um, all the. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, bye. All right. Bye. Six seventeen. Stay safe. I'm okay, see you too. All right. I'm gonna uh, stop the recording, and I'm gonna have Kevin stop the recording. Uh.